Hey, what's good everyone? Tervetuloa in my channel, Channelisa. No, I don't know if you say it that way. Yeah, but I've been learning Finnish. I've been learning Finnish for these past two weeks. I got a new book called Totakai, Italian to English, and then I'm using some other resources. And I gotta say, you know, it's pretty difficult. It's pretty difficult. It's been a journey, but I really enjoy learning this beautiful language. It's very challenging, I gotta say. I gotta be honest with you guys. But uh, I really do like uh, to learn Suomea. And uh, I apologize for not being very present lately. I've been, I mean, fuck. <laughs> I, I caught a cold and uh, I've been so fucking bad. Oh my God, when I say bad, really bad. Like, I, I would sleep like a fucking cat all day long because I had so much headache. My nose was stuffed so bad. I'm still recovering, I'm still recovering, but I feel much better now. So we can get better to doing these video reactions. Today we're gonna check out how Finland became the world's happiest country. Let's go! Look at this miserable, terrible, awful country. I would hate to live here. <laughs> Wait, fuck? no, that's Canada. Look at this cold, dark, isolated country. I would also hate to live here. Oh wait, this is apparently the happiest country on earth, Finland. This is the happiest? Can you imagine how miserable- Of course, because the language just sounds so freaking cool. The language just sounds so freaking cool. I mean, uh, you meet people, you say, How's Katutus tua? Mina olen Mauro. How do you not love something like that? Come on, come on. You can say that every day. Oh my god. The rest of the world must be, and they're the happiest by a pretty wide margin. Here's the rest of the list, and then BAM! Finland jumps Ew. way ahead of Denmark to first- is how the fuck are Swiss people the happiest? I mean, Swiss is so fucking pricey. Like, even water, you will pay like 20 euro for a bottle of water. What the fuck? And they're happy. Are you kidding me? Look at that, even Austria, Israel. Seriously. I don't know if you would ask uh, Palestinian people if they're happy. I mean, because technically, Palestinian comes with Israel, within Israel. So I don't know how actually correct this must be. I have no idea. I have no idea. I think this is pretty bullshit. Look at Italy. <laughs> First place. So what can we learn from Finland for us non-Finns to be happy too? Let's look for some clues so we can stop crying and maybe cheer up for once. Are they happy from their climate? Now you might be thinking... <laughs> What are you talking about? Of course it's not their climate. This country is full of blizzards, rain, permanent nighttime, at least long mm. winter nights in the south, and mosquitoes. <clears throat> so many mosquitoes. But out no, of the top 10 happiest countries on earth, pretty much all of them are cold. The happiest hot country is Australia, and it's all the way down at 11th. Maybe there's something to a cold breeze to make someone happy. But our theory is not always true. Hot Costa Rica is happier than lukewarm Britain, and boiling Saudi Arabia is happier than hot Italy. So even though the weather hot might not- Hot Italy! Increase... Have you ever been to Italy to say that? Oh my god. I mean, I would guess in the south it's hot, but yeah, most of the time it's not hot at all. Come on. I live in the north, so... It's not really hot. It's not really hot. I mean, these past years, with uh, due to climate change and whatever, yes. I feel like Greta Thunberg today. <laughs> the, the weather has been more hot, but uh, yeah, it's not hot at all. I mean, at least when I leave, the summer will last like maybe two months, not even that. <laughs> it's always raining. Some days it's uh, like, yeah, I caught a cold because every fucking day is different. Like one day you have 24 degrees. I go out like this. The next day there are 10 degrees raining all the freaking day today it's hot outside sunny there are i think 22 degrees like how the fuck can you live like this it's unbelievable it's happiness that much the environment might finland is a wooded country it's got a lot of bush a whole two-thirds of the country is forest that might have been relevant in the 1800s but it's the 2000s now most people don't live in the woods they live in cities at least 85 percent of Finns do but hold up, look at these pictures of their cities. Why are there trees? Why is there water? Cities are supposed to look like this. Road, stores, skyscrapers, road, more road, smog, road. It's not supposed to have nature. 
But the average Finnish city uses 30 to 40% of its space for what it calls green space, including Helsinki's 52 nature reserves, Tampere's green shorelines, and Yuvaskula's green ring. That's beautiful. Finnish residents even say that their number one priority for their cities is transportation, like literally mm. everyone else on Earth. But their number yes. two priority is proximity to nature. It also helps that Finnish cities are some of the least densely populated in Europe, and none have Take a some migrants. <laughs> So nature is always near to them. Nice. That seems like a good way to be happy. Could it be their culture? At over 90% Finnish, 60% Lutheran, and small percent Sami in the north, Finland is quite homogenous. They have a culture of education and innovation with most people having a bachelor's degree and having a 100% literacy rate. Not a single person Mm. can't read. I don't know how much I believe that considering their language looks like... They also have an egalitarian <laughs> culture. Wait, 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 wait. Come on, come on, come on. Let's try, let's try, let's try, let's try. Their language wait. looks like. Wow, that's crazy. Lihava kala yervet. Boides gole yavrit. Oh my god, that's so difficult. What does it even mean? They also have an egalitarian culture that shows up particularly well in its work. You know, flat organization, autonomous decision making, strong work benefits, and the average work week only being 35 hours long. Just don't show up late. Mm. They'll beat the sh- out of you if you do. Showing up late would probably break their trust and Finns have built their society very trusting. 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 Maybe the cold and six centuries of foreign rule forced the Finns to rely on their neighbor, can't do much alone when outside looks like this, and can't go alone when your Swedish ruler drags you into another war. Or maybe they're just trusting because of the low crime rates and economic security the Finns have. So could it be security that makes the Finns so happy? Usually worrying about fighting a war or having your house robbed when you're gone or stepping outside and getting immediately shot is not great for your mental health. And Finland is a very Mm. safe and secure country. Having their crime rate since the 90s, having a 0.2% poverty rate, 100% electricity access, and a very long life expectancy. Their biggest crime contributed to that tiny rate, it was traffic. But I think Italy is the country with the highest, uh, you know, when people, wait, how to say it? Highest mortality rate, right? Very long life expectancy. Their biggest... Oh, long life expectancy. Sorry, my English sucks. <laughs> I think Italy is way past 82 years. Come on. Like every time I would go for a walk, like everyone else, I would just look at the... the how to go? I don't know how to call it in English. We call it epitaphy in Italian. I don't know how to say it in English. With the, the papers where they put on all the people that died in the city where you live in. It's always people like 90 years old, 100 years old. So yeah, it's it's crazy in Italy. I think the life expectancy is like over 90s, probably. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a country of old people. It's a country of old people. That's a nice thing. That's a nice thing. It means that you live happy in your country if you, if you die later. You don't want to die. You don't want to die. You keep on surviving because you like where you live. Is crime contributing to that tiny rate? It was traffic offenses. Demographically, yeah, but, they're yeah, also crime in Italy is crazy. 5.5 million people expected to fall to around 5 million by 2100. That's not too big a drop, not like some of the drops in population other European nations are expected to face. It'll be hard on the economy, Ew. but relatively small to make a relatively happy time. Seriously. Geopolitically, too, they're in a secure region. They're tucked safely inside the European Union for a free market, coddled by NATO for free defense, and all their neighbors are rich and stable. Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Germany, maybe Estonia, and... Oh, right. Russia, too. <laughs> Dealing with the Russians has always been high on the Finnish concerns list. They've mm. always had to balance between the West and Russia. After all, Russia would love a port in Helsinki, and the Finns are tiny compared to the Russians. They would get annihilated by them, right? Well, no. <laughs> exhibit one, no. And exhibit two, also no. The Russians probably I love how they will always the bring Finns, it up the window. But they've shown they might still try. So in 2022, Finland applied to join NATO just mm. for that extra layer of security. And there's another aspect of security, economic security. Does money really solve happiness? Well, I have two things to say. One, Finland wasn't always rich. They used to be a backwater, a sludge water, a stick in the mud nobody cared about for most of history. And two, yes, money does make you happy. So this video was sponsored by Surfshark. <laughs> Just kidding. Not. 
With Surfshark, you can keep your identity safe online by encrypting all the data you send between that your was devices both. and the websites you browse. What Imagine all was... the criminals ah, out there yeah, just waiting to steal over. your data or the companies waiting to sell it. Surfshark is essentially just security for your devices. You can change your location by just finding a country and clicking on it, protect your data while you're using free Wi-Fi <clears> studying <throat> for your exam in a public library, get real-time alerts about potential threats to you, hide yourself from search engines, and even have a built-in an antivirus on your device. Now that's Surfshark. If you just peep below and click on the link in the description, you can try it out yourself or use my code HOSER for 83% off and three months free. Plus, if you don't love it within 30 days, there's a money back guarantee. So there's literally no downside to signing up. Now that you're digitally secure, let's see how Finland got economically secure. So back mm. to the real economy. For most of history, Finland was poor. I'm talking trenches poor. In a time when the standard of living was pretty much equal to how much your family could farm, this wintry landscape wasn't exactly the richest. It wasn't the freest either, being under Swedish rule until 1809 and then Russian rule until 1917 when they had that whole revolution. Although they generally had a great amount of autonomy to focus on whatever they wanted, so the law, money, banking, and integrity have been stable for centuries, developing trust. Trust. Rust. This is great news for developing the economy because the rest of it wasn't so great. In terms of natural resources, Finland pretty much only had two, water and wood. Can't easily export water, at least without exporting food through virtual water, so wood was their money maker for most of history. Or I guess pulp, paper, peat, parchment, print, you name it. In fact, the whole reason they even started to industrialize in the 1800s was to build sawmills to meet new Russian lumber demand. And by the time of the world wars, their wood phase wasn't over. Wood products made up four-fifths of their exports, one-third of their industry, Industry and one half of their jobs along with agriculture. The mm. wood trade only deepened the balancing act between Western Europe and Russia. Do we industrialize like these fellows and become filthy rich or do we keep chopping trees for the Russians and become stinking rich? Well, they had no time to think about that because the Russians invaded them in 1939. The Winter War might have prevented a communist government, but it also meant they lost nearly 70,000 men, 10% of their territory, and were forced to pay reparations. Bummer. So during the Cold War, not wanting to repeat that whole mess again, the Finns officially stayed neutral, although definitely leaned more to the West than the East from this sour relationship. They stayed out of NATO, stayed out of the EEC, and stayed out of the Marshall Plan to rebuild Europe. Sure, they still sold timber to the West and slowly started the Soviet trade back up again too, getting much of their energy from them, but they invested that money back to make machines. Elevators, ships, and paper machines. They started mm. manufacturing them and selling them to the Soviets. So from their new wealth, they decided to try to fit in with the other Scandinavians and try out the Nordic welfare model. Education for all, social care, health care, maternity leave, blah, blah. And they continued this slow and gradual path to richness, emphasizing education and innovation above all to make a heavily research and development based economy. Yeah, all nice, until the Soviets collapsed in the 1990s. Hmm, so that means their trade with them just fell dramatically, and I guess that means their currency just collapsed, which, wait, that means their banks, which were already deep in debt, just collapsed, and Finland was hit with the biggest depression it's ever had, as everyone decided wow. now was not a good time to invest in anything. They recovered by the 2000s, but they pretty much gave up paper. It was all innovation now. You might have even heard of some Finnish tech creations. Nokia, Linux, the first internet browser, SMS, basically wow. texting, Angry Birds, and Clash of Clans. All this made with a tiny population. The new Finland is booming, <laughs> economically secure, and on the cutting edge Especially of the Angry Birds. But if there's one thing you should... Yeah, I mean, I, I do remember the first smartphones, Angry Birds, was such a hit, right? It was like everyone would play just that fucking game. Like, you were a loser if you wouldn't play Angry Birds. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my god, yeah, Nokia, Nokia. I mean, I, I'm sure the Finland got super rich like crazy rich after Nokia, oh my god. I still remember in middle school, everyone must have a Nokia, oh my god. The, I had the 3410, everyone else had the 3310, but I didn't really like it, the 3310. I always preferred the 3410, maybe because the, the freaking buttons was all a line in the fucking line. <laughs> That was so cool, oh my god, and SMS, that's crazy, I didn't know that, I knew that Nokia was a, was a Finnish company, but I didn't know about the SMS thing, that's pretty cool.
you should take away from this, it's that there wasn't one moment Finley became rich. It was really a buildup from stable institutions of the business over 150 years. So is it welfare that makes them so happy? Perhaps the security it brings them makes them worry a lot less. But how do they even afford it? Well, Finland is not Norway. The Norwegian government gets nearly half of its revenue from oil money. Finland doesn't have this luxury. And the average Norwegian is almost twice as rich as the average Finn, so they've got a Damn. lot more revenue to tax. Finland has to That's go to those crazy. industries that were slowly built over 150 years and tax them for its revenue. Finland has one of the highest tax burdens on earth. Number two for personal income at almost 57% and what? top 10 in sales tax. What? 57% of your money is... What the hell? 24 per... I mean, yeah, I think Italy it's 23%, uh, right? Bhutan 50%. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? 50% VAT? Are you kidding me? Oh my God. That is crazy. 50% VAT. Oh my God. That is insane. Well, 57% taxes. That's insane. But I mean, I'm sure Italy is pretty much over there, right? I think it's, uh, I don't know. Maybe the taxes is not up there, you know? It must be like uh, 20 to 25% ta taxation, but you got so many other things to, to pay for, you know, for... I don't remember, but there are so many things to pay for, so I'm sure the number is about that when you when you count everything on. But of course, you got some uh, how to say some advantages as well. But Finland has even more, I'm sure. <laughs> Fuck, I wanna go to Finland. <laughs> tax at nearly 25%. But luckily for the Finns, their government Wait, also... but that's kinda weird. Wait, 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 wait. That's kinda weird. How is it possible Austria is 55%? I mean, pretty much everyone. I mean, I'm a professional poker player, so every poker player moves to Austria to open a company or to play. I mean, yes, in poker you don't have to pay any taxes uh, from Austria, but the companies, most of them they open companies. I know there are many people going to, to Austria to open companies. So maybe this is like uh, the taxes you will pay if you are like a, a single person. If you are like a company, you will pay way less. It must be that way. Top 10 in sales tax at nearly 25%. But luckily for the Finns, their government also has a fairly competent accounting department. Every electoral term, the government is given pretty strict spending limits that they have to stick to. It's not every year, it's every government. This means they've mm. usually ended up with a 2-3% to surplus, and although they did get into some serious debt during their depression in the 90s, they ended up balancing it back out with their 2000s boom, and then deficit again with 2008. But as their population ages, shrinks, and takes that tax money, back through pensions they've had to go back to this deficit spending which is threatening their nordic welfare way of life and could scare investment well what are they getting for all this spending though pensions free education unemployment benefits health care family benefits state subsidized housing government loans on housing and of That's course the training needed to deliver these services sounds pretty nice to me it also helps you could actually trust trust <laughs> that your government will get these services to you in a lot of less developed mm. nations your tax bill will come you'll wait for the new services you'll get and keep waiting and keep waiting and keep waiting and they never seem to come trusting that the government won't screw you when you give them 57 yeah. percent of your income is pretty important to feel secure so it's up to you personally to decide if you would take this yes and i want to say something something else that we're gonna finish the video and whatever because <laughs> i'm talking way too much in italy this could never happen first because the government will uh, will fuck you over and second because the people it's even worse than the fucking government i mean italian people i'm italian so i can say it. i don't give a fuck but Italian people is, yeah, they're, they're all, most of them, they are scammers. They're always trying to, to take advantage of the system the whole freaking time. I don't want to point my finger to anyone, but uh, if, if you would talk with an Italian, you will say, you know, I found a way. Would you ever fuck the system if you had a chance? Nobody will answer no. Come on. <laughs> There's not too many. I mean, I don't want to say dishonest because, yeah. But, uh, yes, yes, <laughs> there are a lot of scammers, like uh, every Italian, it's uh, a little bit, uh, a little tiny bit uh, a scammer in his 
own mind because we always have this thinking like uh, we got screwed over by our government so we gotta make them pay i don't know i know i know it's not good i know it's not good i'm trying to always think positive never do that you know always pay for everything never take advantage of anyone but yeah most most of the people have that thing so that's how it is that's how it is unfortunately so i'm sure finnish people is way better than us in that sense this deal, but taking it doesn't seem to make them any sadder. Okay, that's way too much about this happy, jolly, jovial nation. Let's talk about their problems. First is obviously their shrinking population threatening their whole welfare model, bringing rising debt and falling investment along with it. Second, they have a housing crisis. House prices are climbing at a pretty scary rate. But tell me which developed nation isn't facing a housing crisis, am I right? <laughs> I wish I could afford a house. Third, too, the whole Russia too. situation <laughs> isn't too. getting any friendlier right now, and it sucks. Cons yeah, actually, actually, my city, I mean, I live in a small city in, uh, in the north of Italy, so it's it's not that expensive. I'm, I mean, I live near Turin and Milan. Over there, it's crazy expensive, but here it's not. Like, rent, it's pretty high, but if you want to buy a house, it's pretty cheap. Like, the, the market value for houses for the real estate uh, to to buy a house it's pretty good it's pretty good like buying a house here it's really cheap like if you would make a research in my city <laughs> about buying a house like that, that's crazy it's way too cheap like you can buy a, an apartment of 120 meters square for like uh, 40 to 50 thousand something like that it's it's really really fucking cheap but if you will rent the same house you will pay like uh, maybe five to six hundred per month so it's not really that good it's not really that great because i'm thinking that most people you know it's kind of like a, a dead city where i live in so if you want to live here you gotta pay high rent <laughs> if you want to stay here to live okay we will give you the house whatever <laughs> you don't have to pay much for it considering russia was a huge supplier of energy to them when they got cut off from russian gas electricity prices rose almost 50 percent in mm. one year that's they how had to get coal plants back online to meet demand and it doesn't help that 30 percent of their electricity comes from wood still Jeez, wood? Someone helped Finland get out of the 1730s with their wood-burning plants. Get them some oil, uranium, tch, at least a wind turbine. Fourth, sure, Finland is happy on the aggregate, but a lot of Finns are still sad. Finland has 1.2 times the rate of mental illness than the EU and are 66% more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol than their European counterparts. It could be from social exclusion, especially among lower classes, a stereotypically isolationist culture, or simply just a bigger drinking culture in Finland, especially of hard <laughs> liquor. And fifth and finally, two Bunch other main industries, paper and Nokia. Apple destroyed both of those, but they're still quite diversified and complex. So to be happy, some keys are transparency, security, money, but most importantly, trust. 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 <laughs> trust in your government, neighbors, businesses, schools. I don't know. Trust in your dog. Trust that in five years from now, you'll also be in a comfortable position. And if anything happens to you, you can trust someone who will help you. Trust, mm. trust, 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 trust. Trust me. It's what made Finland happy. That was really nice. I think this video, this video was really well done. I'm gonna subscribe to this channel and we're gonna make other reactions to it. Hoser, I'm gonna leave you the link in the description because I, I really enjoyed it. So yeah, let me know in the comments uh, as a fin, what makes you happy? What do you think? Uh, why do you think that your country is the happiest country in the world? I mean, I would say that also Italy, Italy is, a, is a pretty count. It's a pretty happy country. Come on. I mean, everyone wants to... We are all so happy about Italy. You know, we, we go to another country. We're always looking for an Italian restaurant. We always want to experience uh, the Italian cuisine, wherever we are. So I don't know. We're pretty proud of our country. So I don't know why it says that uh, we are not a happy country. Maybe because of the government. It could be. It could be. But we are happy people. Come on. Fuck that. <laughs> this is like uh, very personal, I think. Uh, it's not like uh, you can really measure these kind of things. 
So yeah, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the reaction. Hope I didn't talk too much. Hope you will write down in the comments uh, some answers to my questions. And I wish you a lovely day. Na, Kevin!